so this is the painting we're going to do today and like I promised we're going to do it with the gesso so I can show you how gesso works uh, I did another video that explained gesso and how it works and I showed just some examples so now I promise we'll do use gesso in our painting and this is the gesso I'm using it's acrylic gesso and it will dry to a matte finish and it's by Dollar and Rowney and I'll leave a link for you below and we are going to use gesso today instead of white titanium white or any of the whites that you have in your tubes or your bottles so all you need for this painting today is your gesso it's like a little bit of black there next to it try not to do that and some cad red and some ultramarine blue cad yellow burnt umber and sap green and I got some black there I may not use it but it's good to have the primary colors and your sap green and burnt umber and as you can see the gesso is starting to move because it is more liquidy than the regular paint now if you like nice thick white paint um, that's stiff at the tube then you may not want to use the gesso but I'm just showing you today how smooth and how it blends beautifully with your colors so as you can see in this painting we're going to do our background first so see the background is like a sky sort of sky color uh, got a little bit of pink in there some blue and we will put that in there first and then we let it dry and then we'll add the rest I'm using a one inch bristle brush and that's one of the brushes you will need today for this painting and also be nice to have a flat chiseled edge synthetic brush and that's a size six but you can use any size that fits your painting get a couple of different sizes you know and, and maybe another flat smaller one or filbert brush um, and a liner brush your liner brush so get different sizes you know it's nice to have all these different sizes and um, then you when you go look for them you have them handy instead of trying to I got a round brush here in case I need it and I may not even use all these brushes but I like to have them on hand anyway so get the blue sky in the background started we will use some gesso and a bit of blue and because the gesso is so smooth it makes all your paint um, it gives you more paint you, you can actually save money by using gesso as you can see I have my canvas on a portrait okay so that's portrait it's a long way so turn it this way it's landscape okay so just take your blue paint with your gesso so you tinted your gesso now with blue now you have blue gesso and that's what you're going to use I already primed my canvas with my gesso my white gesso first now I have a really nice surface and I'm going to start painting in this corner over here Look how nice and smooth it is all right good so now if you want a bit more darker blue in that corner you can certainly do that too if that's too light just add a little bit of blue to your paintbrush I just add to the corner there my brush just to darken it up a little bit in that corner not too much how nice that blends beautiful all right so now as we come in the center You go back and forth over it, you'll get a nice smooth look to it. You won't get too many streaks, okay? Good. Now as you're coming over to the center, let's add a little bit of red. A little bit of red and more white. I'm not even really blending. You can you can take your gesso and you can take it and blend it all here if you want, or you can do it on your canvas. I'm going to get more white. I want more white than pink, okay? All right, so 
All right, so now we got a nice pink color inside here. We can blend that over here. See how the edges blend together without destroying. Look, the blue stays blue and the pink stays pink. Nice. Good. So we can add more white gesso on the edge here just to spread it out and get it nice and wet before you add more color if you can do it that way too. Look and you can go back over that again. See how pretty that is? It's going to be a really nice background. So go back into the blue again. So just get your blue. Some, I'll get a new canvas here or a palette just because I'm running out of space on the other one. And I'm just mixing my gesso and my paint together. Good. So you can have any kind of background you want. We want a sky background with clouds or, or trees and branches, but we're going to be putting trees and branches on also. All right. The gesso is really smooth. Makes your paint just flow. Okay. It's almost like a rainbow. All right, I got some more gesso, more paint. I use lots of gesso because it goes so far. You don't have to worry about, because it's, it's cheap enough that you can use lots of it. With your white paint, you're always trying to save and you're always trying to not waste too much paint. Well, with the gesso, it spreads so much and that you don't have to worry because you don't use a lot. Even though it seems like I'm putting a lot of paint on my brush, but it just spreads so beautifully that I don't need as much as you think I do. So when you start using it, you'll understand what I'm saying. So I'm just going back and forth, up and down, Whatever way you want to go, go side to side, whatever way you want your sky to look. All right, so I probably got that a little bit too pink, so I'm going to go over that with some white, with my gesso, okay? I'm going to go over with some gesso, just so that I can brighten it up a little bit. I find that a little bit too pinkish, but you can leave it whatever way you want it. I mean, here I am showing you what to do, and then I say, no, let's change that. But that's good, because then at least you know you can change things around if you don't like what you see. I see that's pretty nice. That's not a bad little background. You can just scrub at it if you want, make little circles, give it a cloudy look if you want to do that. But I'm just going to leave it plain for now. Good. That's a nice background. Now let that dry, and as soon as that is dry, completely dry, then we will do our birdhouse. So now we're going to start the birdhouse, and I have a pattern for the birdhouse, and I'll leave that on uh, my Patreon page. Somewhere you can find it, I'll get it for you. And then what I did was I just took the pattern and put it on my dry canvas and I taped it on and then I just traced it out with some carbon paper. So I just put carbon paper underneath it. I laid it down flat, put the carbon paper underneath it and then I put, used a pen and I traced it. And I had to extend this line up here because it looked a bit short. So that's all I had to do there. And then you get your drawing. And then you take it off and you start to paint. So what you're going to do to do the birdhouse is you're going to take some burnt umber and you are going to add some water to that to make it like a, a glaze. So we'll give it a rough look. Okay, so just add water to your burnt umber and you'll get this kind of a look to it, okay? And I'm using a flat chisel edge brush. And then you can just start painting. Now we'll be doing highlights and things on this. So you pull down in the shape of, follow the line of the, of the birdhouse. 
There we go. See? Good. Now yours, make them out a different color. Maybe you can have whatever colors you want. This is just what I'm using. But you can certainly use whatever colors you want for your birdhouse. Trying to stay inside the lines. Not these down here, they're okay because we can see those. We'll be able to see through the paint. All right. So that's pretty simple. And then we'll do this part here. We'll do the whole birdhouse with this paint. You should be able to see your lines. Try not to lose them because you might have a hard time keeping the perspective of the, the birdhouse if you don't, if you lose them. And you don't want to, oops. Okay. So make sure you can see through your paint. So you can see your lines. And paint going the direction of the way the wood would go on the birdhouse. Okay. Good. Pretty simple. Takes a little patience. Good. See, it make, gives it a wood look when you do that, when you take your burnt umber and you add water to it and make it into a, a transparent color. Good. I'm trying to get that wood look. We're getting it. Leave your hole in the middle of the uh, birdhouse. Try to stay away from that. Good. Another thing you could do is, is paint your lines first with a really dark color and then do this, but this is easier I think because get all this big section done first. Okay. Now don't worry, we're going to go over it again. So we get that done first. Good. See, so you got a wood look to it. There we go. Just by watering down your paint. Let that dry and then we'll go over with a second coat and we're going to go through the lines here with a darker color for shadows. But we need to let that one dry first. I'm just going to change to a smaller chiseled edge synthetic brush and I'm going to put my burnt umber on there. Keep it chiseled. And I'm going to go over these lines here for the shadows. So I'm going to touch and push up here. Now, if I lay this down flat on the table, it would be much easier to do, if you want to do that. If you don't want to stand up, you may need to sit, to put it down on a flat surface. That way you can control your hand better. So, that's why mine is a little crooked. So I'm standing. Okay, so we'll get this one on here. So these are your shadows. A little corner here. And we have a little bit up here. If it looks a bit messy, we can always straighten it up. It's no problem. Let's see. See how messy I got it? Right, so let me get this down here. Alright. And one on the corner. It's okay to spread it out a bit. Good. Now what are we gonna do next? Let's see. 
So take your um, a smaller bristle brush, uh, like a roughed textured brush so that it will be able to make more of a wood look. So what we're going to do is I'm just putting burnt umber on there and we're going to drag that down over what you already did but we want to leave some of that come through so we'll just drag that down like that see and then that will give it a wood look see so let some of the other one come through there we go go with the shape of the if you need to add a little bit of water you can do that too but not too much because you don't want it to be uh, too opaque or too uh, transparent. All right, there we go. There we go. Add a small bit of water just to get that to flow a bit better. Okay. So now we have more of a wood look. See, isn't that better? All right. So just dampen your brush. Put on your paint. Burnt umber. And then we will do some in here. And then we'll drag it down here. Drag it down. If you need more paint, go get it. You want, depends how much wood look you want. some woodsy looking. We'll do the front. Let's do this little top part up here so we won't forget it. Good. And then drag it down, straight down. A little bit here. You need more paint, pick it up. Good. Good. See how much more woodsy it looks? Woodsy? I don't think I meant to say that. Woody. Like almost like mahogany or something, you know, like you would have a table. It's got a nice look to it. So as long as you go with the shape of the birdhouse. There we go. So that looks better. So just put on as much as you feel that you need. If you need a little more in the front here, we can go and do that. I'm not pushing very hard, I'm kind of dragging it, dragging the paint over what I already have done. Because I don't want to lose my underpainting that I did. Good. Now, do a little touch ups here and there if you need them. Nice. All right, now that opening here and here, you can add burnt umber and some black to it if you want to really darken it up, or ultramarine blue. Either will work, make it really, really dark. You want to make it almost black, right? Try ultramarine blue or you can try black. It's up to you. So really, really dark. I'm using a small chiseled edge brush again, okay? And try to keep it chiseled edged so you can get in there. All right. So leave that little opening that, that on the side there, to the right. Leave that there. And try to get that as round as you can. There we go. Good. Very good. What we'll do now is we will lighten up, we will clean our brush. Let's clean our brush really good. 
And now take some of your burnt umber. Take some of your burnt umber and add, let's see, let's see, let's add a bit of, uh, we might make a cream color. Let's add a bit of gesso. Gesso. All right, so now we add a lighter color. And that will be for the right side to make it a lighter opening. Good. What we need to do is take some burnt umber and put that on the other side here so make it look like it's Yeah, there we go, so that you can see that it's too light on that side, so you have to make a few adjustments. Make a few adjustments along the way. Good, it's coming along. Still might have to do some adjustments, but if you do, just go back in and put your black and Round it off a little bit more. There we go. That's better. That's better. All right. Now, if your shadows are not dark enough, you can go back over them again. So you may have to go back and forth a little bit. Just get some burnt umber. You don't need any water this time. And just go into the shadow part that you think needs to be, because you like to have that darker so you can see the shadows. And it looks like, in order for that to work, you need to let it dry. Yes, so in order to get these shadows to work, you need to let it dry and then just put on your dark burnt umber again. All right, and we'll get a nice shadow under here. Make it a little bigger this time. Good. Let me come down to the side. get some nice shadows. Good. And where else do we need them? That's about it. Just those couple of areas here. Over here. Good. Just wipe off your brush, just take the paint off of it, and then you can drag some of that down into your clean up that edge there. Clean up that edge. And clean up this edge. That would have to be wet to do this because uh, you want it to run down a little bit into your birdhouse. Good. Good. Boy, that looks really, really good because it looks so old and worn. Good. I'm going to lighten up this side over here just a little bit more. So you can see it. There we go. Good. Let's let that dry. So if you need any more touch-ups before you we put on our highlights, just take a little bit of brown burnt umber and drag some of that dark stuff on there. Looks good. Looks good. Good. Nice little shadow underneath there, underneath there. So whatever you need, 
if you need more just go back and forth but like I say you can have any color birdhouse you want if you want to make it a little easier than this just wanted to show you how to, to make weathered wood look on the birdhouse just a weathered wood look that's all see and the more you give it more layers you give it the better it starts to look right see that good just going to put pure black on my brush a smaller brush I'm going to darken up that center a bit more it's not dark enough for me now if yours is dark enough you can leave it alone but it's not dark enough for me so I'm going to add pure black oops see the darker it is the more it just goes right deep inside so add some burnt umber and white and a bit of yellow make a nice bright color and then tap into it to get it on your brush and then we'll wipe it off in our tissue for dry brushing I'm still leaving some on there and then we'll take some and make some highlights okay so we need more paint go get it but just don't have too much we're just trying to dry brush a little bit of a, a glaze like a um, like a, a shimmer maybe from the Sun or whatever and just gently pull that on there so if you wipe off too much just go back and get more so it depends on where you want it just sh let it shimmer makes the house shimmer good put a little bit on the t on here there we go see how it makes a nice little shimmer on on your good want to add a bit more white it's not bright enough just add more of your gesso wipe it off in your tissue a bit and then you can add more just gently touch and pull down Okay, if you need more up here so wherever you think you need it just trying to get a bit of a shimmer a little bit here not much hey there we go So the more you layer your paint, it actually gets nicer. I think that should be enough. Just gives it a little bit of a shimmer, a little bit of a little added texture to your birdhouse. And I think I'm going to leave that. Now you can, like I say, you can adjust anything you want to make it nicer. There we go. So make sure that your shadows are still are nice and dark. You have to go over them again. Go ahead. See? Pull them down. All right. So I think I should stop because uh, I could do this for hours. Just with one subject. All right. So let's leave that. Looking good.